So the talk today is on Scaling Compose with Fizz. Uh, Fizz is a tool that we built internally to kind of help us with communication. So uh, I'm JP. I'm with Compose. If you don't know who we are, hopefully you will after this talk. Uh, we're a fully managed platform uh, for open source databases. So we have several offerings today, Mongo, Elasticsearch, Redis, Postgres, Rethink, etcd, rabbitmq, and, and diskq. Uh, and this is a sponsored talk, obviously. So uh, I did want to throw in a marketing slide for my friend Tom. If you go to compose.io slash relsconf, we do 60-day free trial right now. And we also have a kind of a campaign going on. If you try out Redis, we'll send you a, a special edition Redis t-shirt. So compose in 2015. Um, so we're, the company started in 2010 and 2015. We had about 20 employees, I think, and we're fully remote. We have a pseudo office in Birmingham where a couple people like to congregate. But for the most part, we're a remote team, and we span the United States and several other countries. So around this time last year, we were acquired by IBM, um, which that was my reaction when this happened. And, but since then, we've continued to grow. And so the green dots are all of our new employees since the acquisition. And what's cool is we've just continued to kind of spread. We're even more remote now than before. And I think we're actually doing a pretty good job of making it feel like we're one big team all in the same place. Just quick right now, does anyone else in here on a remote team? Or is pretty much everyone office? Got a one, two, a couple people remote? All right, cool, that's good to know. So a breakdown of our organization, it's, uh, you know, it's primarily engineering, and then next is support and ops, and then their other three groups are pretty much all the same. And it is not a typo. We don't have salespeople uh, then or now, so that's always a fun thing. And our organization structure is a little different as well. Um, we're pretty much all empowered to make our own decisions. Uh, we sort of choose what you work on and who you work with and how you go about doing it. And so. In practice, this is kind of what this looks like, and I'll kind of talk about this is part of the tool. Um, but it's always a fun, <clears throat> fun thing to see. Um, all these lines going between each person represents things they've worked on together, and so you don't really <clears throat> have a cool way to see that um, if you're not all in the same office where you really kind of get that day-to-day -day interaction. So we really try to do it with the tool. So breakdown of the app, uh, obviously it's a Rails app. And the primary store is Postgres, and we use Redis for um, some Slack commands as well as sessions. And then we're actually trying out Disk U for uh, Active Job. So it's sort of the backing store for that. And so kind of have a checklist. So if you kind of break it down, one and two are sort of going to be the core of what Fizz is. And then I'll talk a little bit about what's not a project because we don't do project management which is always fun. And then four to seven just kind of help you with your day-to-day, kind of help you get insight into what others are seeing and what they're doing. So the first thing is what's everyone working on? We get this a lot. Even though we have this tool, people are still want to know like what others are doing. And they want to know what others are doing, not just within their own group of engineering or marketing. They want to know what's going on around the rest of the company. So the first concept we have is called posts. And the tool tries to help you remember people's names. Even though there's only 40 of us, 40 of us uh, it's still not easy to remember all the, you know, the names associated with each person. So as you're you know, typing out a post, we do give some helps there, help there. And here's just a couple of example posts. And go into more detail about those in a little bit. So one I had, uh, and then one Matt had earlier. And then they're not all serious either, so the other thing is, there are things that happen throughout the day that are kind of you, you would normally share in a work environment, whether it was you, know, you had to deal with something with the wife or you had to you know, you deal with something with the house. <clears throat> in this case, Kyle had to deal with IBM, um, and so he felt that that was worthy enough of a post. And so here's kind of our general rules for posting. Uh, emoji, strongly encouraged. Uh, you should mention other people. Um, I shamed Michelle earlier today 
for not always including other people in her posts. But the idea is you want to be working on stuff with other people, and the only way that someone's going to know that is if you mention them in the post. And then we feel like we've made hashtags cool again. Uh, Lisa, who's in our marketing and kind of analytics group, loves to use the hashtags. And it's kind of like GitHub Markdown. Most of it's pretty much supported. You can do lists and uh, code markdown. And you, we want to be posting often. You know, ideally, you'd post once or twice a day, maybe when you get going in the morning, kind of talk about who you're working on something with or what you're doing. And then at the end of the day, kind of what you have accomplished. If you go more than like a day or two, I think two days, except for the weekend, uh, the Fizz bot will heckle you in the general channel of Slack. Um, so you will be shamed if you do not post. And the other thing that we do is uh, we kind of like some interaction in the tool. It's not used that much today, but I think as we continue to grow as a team, it's going to be something that we use a lot more is the threadable posts. So you can comment on the main post or you can comment on someone's comment. Um, and you can also like a post, which is something that we felt like is, is pretty good. And I have an empty slide in here. I don't really know what happened. So that's kind of the general concept of post. Everything's really built around that. Um, it's simple, it's to the point, and it really kind of highlights what you're doing. But the other thing is people often do grunt work or they do work behind the scenes that no one ever knows about except for maybe one or two people. So we want the ability to make that known and make it easily seen. So we have a concept called praises. And it's just in the same, you know, same post form. You just uh, prepend it with slash praise. And it gives, basically gives credit to that person. So a lot of times what I see happen is people are like, you know, head down working on something. And they actually forget to post for a couple days. And, but you may notice that. And so a lot of times people try to take the time to praise that person. We also praise people for going on vacation and actually taking time away and being on vacation. Because the heckle bot doesn't really know what vacation is today. Uh, it's one of those things we more, you know, we're hoping to get in soon. And you're not supposed to be able to praise yourself, but uh, there's probably a bug in there now that somebody did earlier today just to test it. Uh, so here's just you know, example praises. These are also work-related a lot of times, but not always work-related. So um, they you know, have a slightly different styling. And the biggest thing is you, know, you want to praise at least one person. Um, and the next thing is a project. So I don't want to, is anyone a project manager? Thank goodness. OK, so the idea with project managers is a lot of times they're kind of the keepers of the communication, right? So you're working on a project. They're the ones doing the status updates. They're the ones communicating whatever it is you're working on with other people. Um, we don't have that because uh, we don't really do typical projects because we don't have managers. Uh, teams self-organize around a single goal. Uh, a lot of times that's whether it's a feature release or even a bug fix. Um, and even then when you're kind of gathering around a central thing, we don't have leads. There's not someone that's like in charge of the project because it's not a project. Uh, we also don't have due dates, but that doesn't necessarily mean we don't plan for things. Um, so what's kind of cool with the fizz is as you're working on something, it's a lot of times you can really see when something's almost finished because people are basically saying, you know, about to wrap this up. Um, and the biggest reason we know is because we don't have roadmaps. We kind of, uh, every day almost, we just really evaluate what's the most important thing for, to be working on right now, whether it's for the customers um, or for you know, internal support. And we really try to you know, base all of our work off of what's, you know, what's most important right now. And, but that doesn't actually mean that we don't, you know, we don't do email with this, so, but that doesn't mean there's no communication. We have a special tag called Noteworthy that uh, DJ, he's one of our writers, he basically takes all the posts that have used that hashtag in the last uh, couple days and he'll generate an email for everybody. So what we call these are actually milestones and they're very simple and short and to the point. Um, and you don't really like complete a milestone you can join a milestone at any time, and when you're done doing whatever the work is, you just move on to it. Move on to something else. Uh, you don't do one, more than one thing at a time. So milestones, you can't really be a part of two of them. Uh, but you can also you can work on, a miles, on another project or another milestone without actually joining it. So it doesn't prevent you from helping others out, and you, know, you can kind of reference that with your, in the post. 
with the, uh, the caret symbol. So if you did a post with uh, caret 32, it would actually be attached to that actual milestone. And you see that the goal is, is always very simple and, and straightforward and something that should be accomplished within a week. Um, very few milestones will span more than a week. We don't really, I don't know of many that have gone that more than two weeks really. So I've mentioned hashtags a couple of times and the, what we really use it for is a way to give context to posts. So we are able to basically take a post with one or more hashtags and people and aggregate that information to give context around whether it's a central function or a central group. Um, so we feel like we've made the hashtag a thing that people use in the workplace and it's not gonna get shamed for. Um, so we use them a lot as a shocker. Marketing loves to use hashtags. Uh, no big surprise there. Um, but every group kind of uses it. And so what this shows is basically all the users that have used this hashtag within the last uh, several days. And here's some example ones. Uh, Lisa is probably the mo most frequent hashtagger in her posts. So it's always fun to show hers. And then on that top hashtags, that's on the each person has a profile, and so you can kind of go see what are the things they spend the majority of their time on. Um, so this is mine, and so it's you know, mostly engineering related stuff. And then we also have it hooked into Slack, where if you use, cer with certain channels, you can set it up to where if somebody includes a hashtag like marketing, it'll hit the marketing channel. But every post, no matter what it is, will hit our general channel. And we feel that's important because a lot of times you, know, you want to read back through when you're, you know, are out. And but we also have built some new stuff to where you can basically be gone for a week or a day and you can easily kind of get a feed of what all has happened. So the last thing uh, you kind of saw earlier is, is connections. So one thing we don't have is obviously really organized groups. We have general engineering, we have general marketing, and we don't have like product development. We don't have, you know, our, our UI group, even if still, we just, you know, we're all engineering. And so without giving context to the work that we're all doing, there's no way to see like something I'm doing is actually applies to another group. And so that's where connections come in. And so I thought it would be kind of, kind of fun to do a little, show off um, some part of, part of the app. We create uh, what we call edges, and so we use a common table expression in Postgres, and so we can do some recursive queries. So what we're doing in this one is we're taking all the mentions and the hashtags on posts, and we're kind of cross-correlating them with one another, and then we group them, and then we use that in this uh, select query where we create weights. So it's basically saying this, these two users have done something together within some certain frequency, uh, and it kind of creates a score, and then we kind of throw them in a hash and return the, number, the nodes, which is just each individual person, and the edges as well. So here's kind of what the edge would look like. Um, you'd have the ID, uh, and you'd have the two users, and then the weight, and then the other bit is the nodes, which is just each individual person. And it kind of gives us a really fun graph of the company as a whole. And so to us, this is, this is what like a healthy working environment looks like. You, you don't see a lot of siloed people. You don't see um, one particular person doing a lot more than others. You don't see... Um, it's, it, you know, it's basically you don't want to see any outliers, and we feel like that's what this shows. And it really, no matter what the view is, you know, you don't really see it. This one kind of breaks it down, so you can see each individual person a lot better. But even the links, you know, they're, it's hard to see them, um, I think it's the slides. But we feel like, so one cool thing is uh, Banks, who's kind of in the middle there, he's been around for, I think, a week and he's already got connections to you know, six or seven people in the company. So it's a really cool way to see you know, if you've got someone new, are they you know, getting involved? Are they kind of diving in? Are they working with other people? And um, we feel like that helps us a lot. So the next thing is Slack. It's kind of our, our lifeline within the company. Uh, it's, you know, when, you, when you log on in the morning, you, know, you kind of hop on Slack and sort of see what's been going on right now. You may want to read back through. Um, but all of our posts, you know, they hit general, and these are just some examples of things that can happen throughout the day. But a big thing that kind of people talk about is, you know, fear of missing out. If you're on vacation or if you just want to take the day off and you kind of want to know what's happened, you know, what have people posted about, you can go to the, you know, the app and scroll back through it. 
But what I found is that I spend the majority of my day, like Slack is there in front of me. I'm not kind of jumping into other like tools a lot. And so if you just, uh, we have special slash commands. So you can do slash day or daily summary or week or weekly summary and it'll just dump in you know, whatever that range is for you. And then so you can easily kind of read back through it and since it's a slash command, you can delete it. So it's not gonna like clutter up your, you know, your main channel or wherever you post that. So the last thing is GitHub. So this is something I added for engineering um, and specifically almost kind of selfishly for myself because I'll be working on something and I might go a day without posting. Um, and so as I'm finally getting get down to posting, I'm trying to think back through like, what have I done? Like, I've, you know, I know I've worked on more than one repo or I've spent a lot of time reviewing someone's pull request. You know, these are all activities that, you know, we want people to spend time, time on. You know, pull requests are vital for us. It's kind of how we do all of our, it's how all code, you know, gets, gets deployed and issues as well. Um, we have a central repository where support will just file issues uh, with information from customers about bugs. And then, so that's work that we can then correlate from support and then engineering will get involved and other, anyone will get involved with that GitHub issue. And so you wanna be able to kind of take all of this action that's happening in another tool and be able to kind of use it in your posts. And so here's an example of what happens uh, in Slack. You can just run um, slash fizz activity and it'll basically dump out all of your activity for the last week, I believe, and it breaks it down, it kind of groups it within each specific thing uh, with a number. And so what we, we do here is uh, when you run that command, the trick is, you know, you, you run it and you get some output in Slack, but there's, you know, you need to be able to correlate that back to an actual post. And so when I was working with one of the designers, he originally, the numbers were gonna correlate with the actual post ID, um, and he felt like that it made more sense to just give a straight numbered list. Uh, so what we do when we you know, generate this is we have a user and then we have you know, whatever the number is in the sequence and then we just create, we dump a list in Redis and so when you use it, we can then pull it back out and say, all right, they gave us 64 and 65, well, what post ID does that really correlate to? Um, so when you do a post in Slack, you can just say fit, you know, slash fizz what you did and at the end you just throw activity colon and then whatever, you know, however many numbers you are on there and you'll see that those correlate to 60, I don't think I had it in there, so it'd be 64 and 65 in the list there. And so what happens in the post, the actual post, um, we tried to kind of mimic it after, you know, if you go to your user profile in GitHub, and it'll show you a little breakdown of what all you've done. Uh, we try to model it after that and be able to actually link to the activity. So, you, you know, if someone posts something and you see some commits to a project that, you know, you're interested in or, you know, you work on yourself, you can then go and take a look at it. Uh, so the other things, that's, you know, that's really it. Other item, items we're hoping to add soon, we use Help Scout for our ticketing system, and Trello, our ops team likes to use that, and there's lots of other things that we use. We don't really make people only use one tool. Uh, so the goal is for us to open source this uh, pretty soon here. Uh, when we first started working on it, we were pretty lazy and would hard code things that really should be environment variables like our Slack token or our Slack channels or anything like that. So we're trying to clean up the code base a little bit um, to get it out there because we think you know, it might be of interest to other people. And it does use you know, more than one database, but we're a company who can help you with that. So that's all my questions, or that's all my talks. Are there any, anyone have any questions or, or comments? All right, well thanks for coming. Uh, you know, I'll be around afterwards and you know, we got a booth. If you want to come by and talk database or talk fizz.